It is time now for our segment that we call In Good Company, where we showcase people who are breaking barriers or overcoming obstacles. And our next guest is about to face one of the most challenging obstacles in the world. Adventurer Jermaine Middleton is on a mission to make history with his quest to climb Mount Everest. He is here to tell us more about this incredible journey. Welcome. Hey, good morning. Good morning to you. I was uh, reading all about you, and it sounds like uh, you've had an adventurous spirit from the very beginning, sort of a th thrill seeker <laughs> even at a young age. Tell us when you first realized uh, that you were uh, fearless. Yeah, so I've kind of always been a daredevil. Uh, my family makes fun of me for it. Um, it's just kind of <laughs> been a part of who I am. So, I mean, I've just, I get ideas and I try stuff, and I've been that way since I was a kid. So. Yeah, I heard yeah. Uh, skydiving off your roof. Yeah, skydiving off the roof Trash was definitely bags, fun. Trash yeah. something involved. <laughs> uh, thank God you survived. Yeah, thank well, God Don't try this at high. home, kids. <laughs> Say that again. So but, thank God my roof isn't that high. <laughs> exactly. But that's where it all started. And then uh, talk about how this uh, passion just became something that you really wanted to pursue lifelong. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, I'm just a big kid and I haven't grown up yet. So those <laughs> ideas that you have when you're a kid and you're like, man, I want to try this or do that, you know. Uh, just kind of stuck with it. So as you become an adult, as you become older, you just look for different opportunities and, and ways to pursue those different dreams that you had as a kid. So, sure. Yeah. And uh, you're on a mission now to climb Mount Everest. And mm -hmm. uh, right before the show, Tom Sullivan asked when this would happen. And you said plan A is yeah. April, plan B is August. Yeah. So what's it going to take for it to be plan A, which is next month? Yeah, so plan A, I still need some corporate sponsors to help get me to that point. Actually, we're summit sponsors, as I call it. Got it. Um, so still just the financial aspect of it. As, actually having a conversation with the company right now that I'm going to supposed to be climbing with and they were saying hey we can still make this happen it is pretty mm -hmm. close to the deadline but we're right at that limit yeah. so definitely looking for some people that want to help support get to the top and uh, yeah so that's nope. the biggest thing and I was reading that a lot of uh, your prior climbs have been self-funded but when you are uh, pursuing something like Everest I, mm -hmm. it does cost what upwards of uh, tens of hundred thousand dollars what would you yeah, say so a little bit well around hundred thousand dollars in the entire budget for the big project Got it. Uh, but yeah Everest can be very expensive as you can imagine it's an extreme environment that's not a place where you want to skimp or, or you know kind of pinch your pennies there sure mm -hmm. and, and talk about some of the other mountains you've scaled what at this point has been the most challenging yeah so I've I've uh, been fortunate to climb a good bit of peaks in the past year, especially. Uh, I've climbed uh, Mount Whitney in Colo uh, excuse me, California, yeah. which is the highest peak in the lower 48. Um, climbed Mount Baker, um, Mont Blanc, uh, Kilimanjaro, and Aconcagua, so two of the seven summits. Uh, and out of those, Mont Blanc is actually the toughest. That's the highest peak in, uh, in Western Europe. And it isn't the highest by any means. Uh, you know, Aconcagua is substantially higher, but there are some other circumstances. I had a fractured leg at the time when I was on Mont Blanc, and that made it extremely challenging but and you still did it yeah that's incredible <laughs> which ones of the one that you've the ones that you've climbed ha have you done your research that is most like what Everest will be like um, I would say probably so when we put the itinerary together the 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 mountains that I need to climb before Everest, we kind of mixed it up a bit. So peaks like Mont Blanc, where it's a glaciated peak covered in snow entirely, we have to have crampons and rope systems and that sort of stuff. That it was to prepare for that part of the Everest experience. But also a peak like Aconcagua, where it doesn't have the technical aspect to it, but it's extremely high. So the elevation for that is nearly 23,000 feet. And so that's to prepare for the elevation component. So not one in particular, right. but the, com the combination Aspects of the two different factors, exactly. Of several. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, luckily, uh, technology is, has advanced so much with equipment that now it is, when I say easier, I don't mean to use that <laughs> adjective. It is not easier, but it, well, it's um, giving you the tools that you need um, in terms of being able to uh, check realistic uh, climate changes, all of exactly. those things. Um, how has that helped you over the years um, in, in helping you reach your goals and attain your goals? Yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's easier. Right. I, th I would say <laughs> safer, is a, safer is a more appropriate word. Right. So I mean, being able to re better predict the weather, uh, warmer uh, equipment and gear that you can wear to keep you safer, that's a big thing for me. And I think that's a crucial part of just mountaineering in general, knowing that you can go into an environment and you can push yourself a little bit more than you would in other situations sure. and, uh, and still know that you have a good comfort window. Uh, so in particular, my last climb in Aconcagua, we were able to look at the weather forecasting very a lot because that can fluctuate, you know, kind of exactly at the drop of, you know and so basically we looked at it and found a perfect day and it worked out to where the weather was really accurate in that particular day it was just a great summit window that we had you know t it was still freezing cold I mean it's like yeah. negative 10 negative 20 but 
but that you, was good. And so wind was low and all that stuff. But then the next day, right after that, as we saw, like the wind picked back up and it's back to 50, 60 miles an hour on the summit. Wow. And so, yeah, we were fortunate. And again, that's where the technology kind of played a big part in that and helped us be successful in the Absolutely. Climb. It's incredible. How do you prepare uh, mentally and fit? You're in great shape. Uh, so physically, uh, what is that? meant for you those workouts and mm -hmm. then also mentally yeah so uh, I do a lot of cycling and that's probably one of the biggest things so cycling a lot of running as well yeah um, that's good for the physical component but also just the endurance and the time and pushing yourself for hours you know so if you go for a hundred uh, mile hundred mile ride you may be out for six hours or so and so having that mentality to kind of push yourself for a long period of time that's very similar to it as in a mountain environment because you're waking up early and you're moving for six to eight hours a day sometimes longer like summit days typically around 12 hours and pretty much all the peaks that I've climbed summit days have been about 12 hours so you wow. may wake up at midnight you may wake up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. but you're pushing yourself for the entire day and so that's part of the, the mental preparation that you need to prepare for on the front end is not just how tough it can be but sure. how long and how, how tough long, it is right being so, able yeah. to endure in exactly. all of those conditions mm -hmm. and you are doing it for a great cause uh, let's talk more about it because you know we have a lot of people that mm -hmm. that do work for companies and perhaps are working from home and this is something that they can pick up the phone and call their powers that be and say let's yeah. support this gentleman on his endeavors so mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about also who who will um, uh, benefit from this client yeah yeah so I'm um, fortunate that for myself, a lot of what I've been able to do and accomplish in life is because of the childhood that I had. And so when I wanted to benefit people through this, through this climb, you know, I was like, man, it's a really unique opportunity. How can I use that to benefit others? Right. Uh, you know, if I get to the summit of a mountain and it's just me standing there, so what? But how can I use that to, again, help others? Um, so I wanted to focus on organizations that really target kids and at-risk youth. And so Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, I think that's, yes. everybody knows how great their organization is. Incredible. And doing so many great things to benefit youth. And they're gonna get the, the majority share of the funds that are raised for uh, for the climb. Um, additionally, it's the Atlanta Dream Center, and they're another great organization that does a lot of really powerful stuff in the city. So whether that's fighting uh, human trafficking, mm -hmm. uh, trying to reach uh, at-risk children as well, uh, they're another great organization. And then finally, Four Corners Group, and they also target at-risk youth uh, through whether it's through the incarceration systems or that sort of stuff, they target them. And so but those are basically the organizations. And if you want to find out more, you can go to my website and check them out. But yeah. they're organizations that I not only believe in their causes, but their ability to benefit those causes as exactly. well. Exactly. So, well, yeah. you are so impressive and so inspirational, Jermaine. <laughs> uh, we want to have you back when you are, are done with this. Yeah. And uh, we want to hear all about it. In the meantime, if you would like to help him in his quest to climb Mount Everest, all you have to do is visit his website. It is summit 413 com. That's summit413.com. Thank you for yeah. taking time out to Thank be here. Thank you very much for we having me. We appreciate it.